what's going on guys we flat in here with a brand new video today today we're going to be talking about the ultimate breeding guide for temtem so first off i want to mention volgon and tyranak as they come in eggs uh volgon and tyranak are uh having a maximum fertility of zero so they cannot be bred together the only way that you can get them is through their uh respective raids so uh the sacred lake or the annex sanctum but getting into the actual breeding guide itself, we're going to be talking about Luma breeding, we're going to be talking about SV breeding, and a couple of other uh, nicks and knacks here and there. Let's go ahead and start off by Luma breeding first, because uh, I have a lot of setup for that. Ideally, the thing that you want to do, of course, breeding, you want to get two Thames of the same type, uh, whether they have a uh, cross-typing or not. That doesn't matter, as long as they share the same typing, that's fine. So, like, my Vulor here is Fire and Earth. My Osuchi here is Earth, so these two can breed together because they have the same typings. Male, female, of course, that's what you need. You need to take a look at their fertility count. It's going to be all the leaves that are lit up, including the stem. That's how much fertility it has left. Once a tem is completely out of fertility, it can no longer breed anymore, and it will be deemed useless besides battles and things like that. So my Vulor here has six fertility because it has five leaves lit up and the stem. Now, looking at its stats here, and then looking at my Osuchi stats, there's going to end up being a percentage between all three of them. The first line is going to be 20% for that chance to happen, 40% for the middle one, and 40% for the high tier one, whenever you see the three lines. I'll show you exactly what it looks like now. So once we go to the breeding guy, we drop in two Thames here. We'll go Vulor and Osuchi. Let's do it. And then three lines are going to appear. 20% on the low end, 40% on the mid tier, and 40% on the high tier. Now there's a few stats in here that are not really that amazing. So what do we do about that? Well, you can fix that a little bit. What you want to do is you want to go to the uh, guy next to the breeding center. And you can buy strands off of him. Now the strands are going to be here to guarantee a stat passes over. Uh, on the tem that you equip it to before putting it into the breeding center. So they have HP, they have stamina, they have speed, uh, so on and so forth, whatever stat. They have the uh, trait to pass over to. If you're happy with your stats, you can get a trait to pass over to. They also have these dual ones as well. There is uh, defense and special defense, attack, special attack, HP, stamina. Uh, these are pretty good to be able to pass over those guaranteed. If there's something that's 50 or higher, green stat, so on and so forth. But uh, Luma eggs by themselves as 1 in 75 don't sell for as much as they could. The way that you can get them to sell for even more is by egg moves that are appropriate for the Tem. Now, not every egg move is going to be... Um, not every egg move is going to be, like, essential for each Tem. Like, for example, Brock Goblin can learn Frond Whip through uh, breeding, and it's more of a special attacker, so Frond Whip is not crazy good on it. However, there is some good uh, egg moves that do pass over onto some Thames that are uh, what I would deem essential. Uh, for example, it looks like I got rid of a couple of my Thames, but for example, this Smolzy here, it has Rage, Show Off, Sparkling Bullet, and Wrenching Massage. A few of these are pretty good. Uh, you can tell it's an egg move if it has the little egg in the bottom left-hand corner. Now, don't worry. If you do want to take off an egg move and try out something else and you put it in the learn techniques, you can learn it later. It'll always stay in this slot. They don't go away forever. So long as it's learned the uh, egg move through breeding or by ETCs that you can get in uh, different types of rewards or even buy them in the auction house, uh, they will not go away at all. Now... That pretty much solves Luma breeding. You can do and hatch the eggs yourself if you want to try to shoot for a better Luma of the ones that you have. Or you can sell them off for money, depending on which one you uh, want to go about it. Now, the big one is going to be breeding for SVs. Breeding for SVs is going to be huge because that is where uh, not only are you going to be able to make your Thames better, or you can become a breeder to sell them off into the auction house to make some money. Now, there's a few different ways that people go about this. The main one is through Mimits. Mimits are kind of like the dittos of the game. Um, Mimits are really, really good because they... Um, when they have a 50 stat, 
sometimes even multiple 50 stats you can breed that with any tem regardless of the gender so it actually shortens down all of your breeding time by a lot uh, what a lot of people like to do is they like to buy mimit radars and then they catch all the mimits that they have in that radar and that becomes their now new breeding stock because in the first zero to 100 you get that's when you get the better sv stats most of them are going to be 50s as well when you go throughout the radar as well you have a chance for the luma of course but there's also all 300 of those encounters are going to be really really good stats now in order to get the mimic quest started you need to do eco balance side quest it's going to be in the nento labs in neo Edo. that's how you can start the quest in order to find mimics in the wild once that side quest is done the patch address that you end up ending the quest on that's where mimics will all spawn whether you do it by radar or whether you do it by just random encounters it's going to be super duper helpful for you Another thing that people do um, is they like to do the two side quests for uh, the egg timer, which will show you how long an egg has left, uh, left to hatch. And there's also the incubator backpack. The incubator act pack is going to um, shorten the time uh, frame for when your eggs hatch. It's a huge uh, percentage, so it's actually very helpful to breeders or people who are just hatching eggs on the, uh, on the down low. Um, now let's get into actual SV breeding. I'm going to have a image up here to talk about what they do exactly. But one thing I want to uh, highlight for sure is that um, fertility counts are going to be huge for you. Whenever a Tem has stats that are 49 or 50 in their stat pool, so for example, this Volfi here, if I were to catch this Volfi randomly, its fertility would not be max when I would get it. Uh, because it's not Luma, this fertility will not lower from 8. Um, it will actually... Um, th this would be a... This would be a 4 fert Luma, or 4 fert non-Luma, because of its stats. If you take a look at my Lawali, actually... My Lawali here has no stat that is 49 or 50. It's a Luma, but look at its fertility count. It's 8. That means that the 49 and 50 count will knock off a fertility leaf. So you got to pay attention to that too, um, because you could over or under uh, estimate your fertility counts on your breeding. It's a, uh, a big thing to pay attention to. Now, this is the most up-to-date um, guide that I've seen so far. If you guys want the photo, I can send it to you in Discord. Feel free to join the Discord. Um, otherwise, feel free to uh, pause the video here and check out what is going on here. Basically, this is what's considered chain breeding. You have one side of one half of the cockoos, and you have another side with another half of the cockoos. And then you have to get both of those together in order to breed for your uh, perfect cockoo. As you can see here, this person's doing aggressive DNA strand gifted. Uh, then you get the attack special attack passed over to here. You get one fertility and leaf knocked off on the off breed. You have a mighty DNA strand here to pass those two over. Along with a Vigor, Light, you pass those over. Oh, now you have Attack, Special Attack, Speed. This one's Speed, HP, Stamina. Mighty and Vigor, you pass it over to this. You have Attack, Special Attack, Speed, HP, Stamina, which will knock down the Leaf down to, I believe, 2 in the end. And then the off breed, you have it on this side. You do the same on this side, but with the opposite. You do Defense, Special Defense, HP, Stamina. You pass over those strands, and then that's how you get these two together to breed for your ultimate. Now, you got to keep in mind... But this is going to be expensive and not only is it going to be expensive but um you got to keep in mind that not every uh tem has a balance of uh male to female odds that are always 50 50. uh sometimes they are 15 sometimes they're 85 they're, they're sometimes they're all mixed up um so you got to keep in mind that gender locking is a thing that can happen and that rng can screw you over um this is where I would uh, take over with Mimits. Mimits help uh, kind of eliminate this process a little bit more. Um, so I would suggest doing the Mimit radar, getting a good breed stock in Mimits, and then uh, getting those uh, passed over uh, to try to eliminate that a little bit more. Incubator X and Y tickets are kind of scams. A lot of people get them, but they ended up wasting like another 10,000 uh, hand suns just to not get what it is. I would say playing the RNG game is a lot easier than spending 10k on your uh, one ticket to hope to God that you get your gender, uh, your non-gender lock to uh, continue your breeding. Um, 
because 10,000 for a X or Y ticket is going to be 10 of your strands, which is going to be huge uh, loss in the end. You could probably end up just buying a Mimit with the stat that you need um, and one strand for like half that price, if that. So I would say uh, you would be saving a lot more money by that. It's kind of uh, it's kind of a, uh, a a way to lose more money. If you want to sell for profits, keep in mind that you're going to have to end up doing two sets in order to make profit. Because one set you'll be a little bit under, but if you make two sets, you'll be quite over. So you got to keep that in mind too. That if you're trying to breed for profits, two sets. Um, I think that pretty much covers everything that I wanted to talk about the uh, breeding guide. The three side quests that I mentioned, I'm going to be dropping into the description as well so that you guys can go ahead and uh, follow those uh, quest lines so that you can get all of your uh, breeding quests done together. Keep in mind that uh, the two breeding quests are going to need some Thames in order to pass over so that you can complete them. Other than that, I think that's going to be the ultimate breeding guide from me. My name is Beefland. I'm signing on out of here. Take care, all. Laters.